Shalom from Karim Biyavna. The story is told about the Dubna Magid that he once uh, went into Golas, that traveled incognito, and he comes to a certain town, and he's told, did you hear? The Dubna Magid is coming to town. I'm running to hear the Dubna Magid. And the Magid himself thought that's a little bit strange. He didn't tell anybody that he's coming. So what's going on over here? Is, is there another Dubna Magid? Never heard of such a thing. So he comes to shul to listen to the drasha. Some fellow who claims to be the Dubna Magid gets up, starts speaking, and initially he did speak some uh, nice words of Musar, but at some point he started speaking nonsense, and the Magid felt uh, he needs to do about some, something about this. This identity theft shouldn't go without, uh, without protest. So he gets up and says, I'm the Dubna Magid. And of course, the other fellow says, what you talking about? I'm... So a whole big raucous, a whole big uh, tumult started there in the uh, shul. And the Gabam decided, well, uh, we'll figure out who's the real Magid. We'll ask each one to give a uh, drasha, and whoever is able to give a better drasha, apparently he's the real Magid. Okay. So what the other fellow said, I don't know. What the real Magid said, the story goes, is the following. In this week's Pasha, in Pasha Skiseitse, the Torah says, Lo amoni umavi b'kal Hashem, b'chulei. And why is it that lo yavo b'kal Hashem, says the Pasuk, al devar shalo kidmu aschem balech b'maymayim. They weren't kind to you, they weren't balei chesed, they didn't provide lechem and maim. Presumably, it doesn't mean that the Jewish people were in a situation of sakana sefashos, they survived for 40 years, but a lack of chesed. And, continues the Pasuk, and they wanted to curse us, to curse us, and to kill us. So it seems a little bit strange. We're putting two things together. Number one, uh, the fact that they didn't do chesed. Number two, the fact that they wanted to kill us. Certainly, the fact that they wanted to kill us, that seems a lot more significant than uh, the lack of uh, chesed. So, one of the approaches that are taken, and the approach that, according to this uh, uh, story, the Magid took, is the following. It's true that certainly the fact that Sahara Lecha has Bilam ben Ba'or, that's a lot more serious. But the source, it all began. It all began with a lack of chesed. The person that focuses on himself, the person that's not willing to help out others, so that's something that's a slippery slope, in a sense, and could lead to the fact that he'll be interested in harming others and perhaps reach a point that will want to curse, have others cursed, and eventually uh, kill them. Of course, a similar idea we have at the beginning of the parsha with respect to the Ben Sarah Mora. Rabbi Rivlin points out, at the beginning of the parsha, we're told that the Ben Sarah Mora that uh, uh, drank a little bit too much wine, uh, was a glutton, ate too much uh, meat. Yomos Zaka va'al Yomos Chayef. The Pesukim understand, uh, the Gemara explains, that eventually uh, this could lead uh, the fact that he's going to be so set on sticking to his uh, habit, uh, this could lead to eventually being molesting as uh, over a and uh, a murder. So uh, says the Magid, therefore the Pasuk points out that it began with lo kidmu eschem, with that lack of chesed, but lack of chesed is something which eventually led to their interest in getting us uh, killed and having us cursed uh, and uh, being significantly harmed uh, as a result of the Klala of uh, Bila. On somewhat of a uh, related note, Rabbi Greenberg, uh, uh, the Nasi HaYeshiva, would often point out the following. Rav Kook in Musar HaKodesh, in uh, Kuf Aleph, has the following a very fascinating insight. Rav Kook suggests that a person that's very much involved uh, with himself so we might expect such a person would be a happier person, the person that's uh, concerned, that gets involved uh, with the rest of the Jewish people. A person that's just involved with himself, he doesn't need to think about all sorts of sorrows that others uh, have. But, says Rab Kook, the opposite is true. A person that's only interested in himself, that lowers a person, brings him down, makes him smaller, and there's no limit to the suffering that uh, will come about as a result of being self-centered. Every little thing that uh, doesn't work out for him will bother him uh, so much, build his own uh, world. 
a person dafka that's involved with others, that gives of himself to others, tries to help others, such a person will be a much happier person. Rav Kook, presumably speaking from experience, who was more involved with Klal Yisrael than Rav Kook that signed his letters at times, Eved La'am Kadosh. So Rav Kook understands that the way, the key to a joy in life is by committing oneself to others, to be involved with others. From time to time, one hears about some uh, people that committed all sorts of terrible crimes, and the neighbors, when interviewed, will say, hey, that fellow, he was only involved with himself. He never hurt others. Never. Sometimes he had no sentence. When a person builds his own world and doesn't see himself as part of the larger uh, universe, such a person could sometimes end up doing terrible things. The key to happiness, says Rav Kook, is being involved in chesed, helping others. May we all be zelcha. Have a good Shabbos.